Welcome to tutorial two. All right, we're going to dive right in and get started trying to use these audio frequencies to make an array of cubes move. So first of all, in our tutorials folder down here, we're going to right click and create a new folder. Call that Tute 2. And uh, now what we want to do is we're going to duplicate our, our template scene. Uh, Control D to duplicate and drag that into our Tute 2 folder. And we're just going to rename this Tute 2 Object Array. Okay. We'll double click that to open it up. And you should see along the top here that we now have tutorial two object array open. Okay, next up. So because we've uh, copied our template scene, we already have our frequency analyzers in here. So if we hit play, we just get the same as the template scene. We have our frequency analyzers to play with already. So now what we need to do is create a script so we can create an array of objects and make them move using those different frequencies. So let's right click here, create C sharp script, and we're going to call this FFT object array V1. Uh, we're going to version these because we're going to iterate on them as we go through the tutorial so we can add more functionality to them. Okay, first of all, what we're going to want to do is have a way of creating a line of cubes. So first of all, let's just quickly create a line of cubes. So we're going to need an array of game objects and we'll call those FFT game objects. And we're going to need a game object to populate those with. So we're going to create a public variable, which is a game object, which we can fill in the editor. And we'll call that object to spawn. Uh, now you'll see here that I've used the um, nomenclature FFT. FFT is a shorthand for um, frequency analysis. So it's fast Fourier transform. It's the mathematics behind the frequency analysis that we're going to use. So uh, something else we will need to define our line of our array of objects is how far we want to space them. So we'll want a public float spacing. And give it a default of one. And that should do us for spawning some party, uh, spawning some objects in. Okay, now down in our start, we're going to use a for loop and we're going to iterate through the amount of objects. Now, how many objects do we want? Now, this really depends on how many frequency bands we're trying to read at a time. So at the moment, we don't actually have a way of reading in uh, the frequency bands that we want in here. So what we need to do is there is an object in this project already called the frequency band analyzer. So we want to create a public slot for that, the frequency band analyzer, which is our FFT. Then what we want to do is inside of that frequency band analyzer, uh, it has a, an enum for the amount of bands. So we're going to call this uh, freak bands. And we'll give that a default of eight. So now we have a way of bringing in the frequency analysis and to tell this object array how many bands we want. Okay, so down here in our start method, let's get to creating our FFT, FFT game object array. Uh, we'll make a new game object array. And what we're going to do is grab the integer from this frequency bands enum. 
Now, if you haven't seen this before, um, if I, sorry, if I go to the definition here, when you declare an enum, you can actually just give it an integer value here as well. So that's what we are using. You can cast that to an integer. So now we've got our game object array. We can just use our game object length to iterate through that on our for loop now. And we can just start instantiating our game object new t object. So using our uh, use built in instantiate method, we're going to call our object to spawn. So this is the object that we're passing in at the top here. We're going to get that to spawn. Then we're going to give uh, set the parent of this transform. So the new FFT object dot set parent. Oh, sorry, transform dot set parent. And we want to set that to the current transform. So then we can, they're all uh, transformed by this parent object. Then what we want to do is set the position. So, um, because we want to place them side by side with one another, we're going to want to transition them along by our iterator i, and our local position. So we want to give this a new vector three. Now we want to keep this, this is all going to be local because it's parented to this object here. So zero, zero, zero. This would mean that that'll be located at the zero, zero, zero of this particular object. So what we want to do is we'll take our iterator value, which is our i, and we're going to times that by our spacing, which we have up here. So now these should lay out when i is zero, it should be at zero, when i is at one, i times one is one. So we'll get them laying out dunk, 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 side by side. And then we want to make sure that we fill our array with our new, oh, sorry, new FFT object. Okay. So we're bringing in our frequency analyzer and we're defining how many bands we want to use. We are then create, we've got a, a declared an array of game objects. We have an object that we would like to spawn or instantiate and then we have our spacing. Then we come into our start method, create our array, and then iterate through instantiating all those objects, setting the parent, setting their position, and filling the array. So let's jump back into Unity now. And let's have a look at, let's create ourselves a new game object. So. You can do that by doing Control Shift N or right clicking uh, Create Empty, and we'll call this uh, Object Array, and we're going to drag our FFT Object Array onto that. Okay, so we don't have any errors at the moment, um, but now we have our Object Array, so it's asking for a frequency band analyzer. Now, if you click on the uh, little circle here, it brings up all of the frequency, all of the relevant uh, objects in the scene. So these are all the frequency band analyzers that are under here. Now, because some of them don't come in, like some of the frequencies don't come in until later on in the track, I'm going to use the synth frequencies for the most part. And for objects to spawn, what we're going to do is create a cube. So let's create a cube. Um, so we'll go to our scene, just a stock standard cube. Pop that back at world zero, that you don't really have to. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to drag this cube into our tute folder and make a prefab out of it. Uh, now that it's prefabbed, we can delete it because once it's prefabbed, we can just drag it out of here. And so we're going to pass this cube into our object to spawn. And let's hit play, see what happens. Okay, so you can see here, 
that we've got our this. You can see here that we have our eight cubes spawned and they're spaced one apart, but they're not currently doing anything. That's relatively boring. So let's, but they're also outside of our game view. So let's, let's change that as well. Let's grab our object array. Uh, let's change our cube size. Let's make the cube. So we've gone down to our prefab. I'm going to make that 0.2 by 0.2 by 0.2. Grab our object array. Move it over to like say negative 2, 0, 0. And we'll change our spacing because our cube is now 0.2. In uniform scale, we'll change our spacing to a, let's say 0.25, so we can see a little bit of space between them. We should get our cubes up here. Yep. All right, if you're getting these lines up and you want them to go away, you can hit gizmos. That's just showing debug gizmos. So I'm just going to uh, increase, um, I'll just bring this across to just say negative one. All right, there we go. So, now, what we want to do is make these cubes move. Let's start doing that. Let's go in our update loop. Um, what we want to do is iterate through each of our game objects and then scale them by a set amount. Now, what we want to do is make sure that we store the original scale of the object. So let's get a vector three to store our base scale. And let's also uh, pass in a, let's get a public vector three uh, scaling strength. So we want to know how much we want to scale these cubes by when the frequency comes in. So let's give that a default of vector three up. So the scales will, uh, the cubes will scale up in the y axis. So what we need to do is store our base scale at the start here, which equals our object to spawn, transform local scale. Okay, then we are going to come down here. So as we in our update loop, when we're iterating through our objects, we want to manipulate the local scale. So the local scale is going to equal our base scale plus whatever our scale scaling strength is times, now this is the fun part, where we get our FF, our frequency analysis value. So we've got our FFT object, which we've got at the top here. Now it has a method called get band value. And into that, we need to pass the index of the band that we're looking for. So in this case, because we're iterating through an array of game objects, which is the same length as the amount of bands that we want, we pass our i in, because i is our index here, our index of our iterator. Then we pass in the frequency bands, so it knows which frequency bands it's pulling it from. And this should start scaling our cubes based on the freak incoming frequencies. So let's have a look at what we've got here. I'll turn mute audio off for this, and we hit play. There we go. All right, we're starting to get a little bit of movement here. There's not a lot going on there, so what we can do is, I'll leave the I'll hit the mute audio. We can come in here now and start changing our scaling. So we can see we're getting a much stronger response now. Uh, if I come over into my scene here, uh, you can see this is just scaling on the Y axis, but we could change it so it scales on the Z axis as well. So you get a little bit of movement this direction. Give it a bit more depth. And that concludes our first tutorial. We have an array of objects and they're moving. See you in tutorial three.